Good morning guys and welcome back to another video with me. I want to show you another full day of eating, starch solution and low calorie density style. I also want to show you how I've managed to lose 60 pounds, what I've eaten as a volume eater who is a foodie. I love food and I like to eat a lot of food and I want to show you how I do it as a busy mum when life is pretty crazy and I've got loads of stuff going on. So join me for a day of fun, delicious eating. I don't know what we're eating yet, but we're gonna figure it out together. If you guys are wanting to jump into your weight loss journey, you guys know that low calorie density food is where it's at. So that is starches in terms of potatoes, rice, oats, you've got your beans and lentils, your fruits, but obviously your veggies as well. Now, I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but I like to start my day with veggies every single morning. So I'm gonna go, basically the first thing I do every single morning when I'm hungry is I go to the fridge and I have a look and see what veggies I've got or the freezer and then I decide what veggies I'm going to have and I've gotten into the habit of doing that every single day going to check my veggies without fail I have that on autopilot because I do it every single day and that is the way you build up a habit by doing something every single day day in and day out um, otherwise it's really hard to build up a habit if you're doing something once a week so anyway let's go and have a little hunt in my fridge see what veggies I'm gonna get into this morning I've got two things in my mind and I don't know which one to go for Where's my cabbage? Where's my cabbage? Cabbage. So my first thing that I'm really interested in is actually a repeat of yesterday because I've still got some more cabbage and my yesterday's breakfast was so delicious. Even Romy loved it. She just kept on shoveling it in. So it was the uh, cabbage thoran, cabbage and cauliflower thoran. It was very nice. So I'm thinking about doing that. Uh, I'm also debating doing like a big, I've got a big, bag of frozen mixed broccoli and cauliflower i could do a big massive soup but actually i might do that for my dinner's veggies so those are my veggies for the day fantastic should we do our veggies run around can you grab this cauliflower for me sweet pea you hold that cauliflower okay so we're gonna do it it's a repeat of yesterday i'm sorry if you've already seen it if it's a bit boring i'm not going to show you how i make it go and check out yesterday's video but i'll show you when it's finished and it's done delicious so I've got my mustard seeds and cumin seeds in the pan. And whilst I'm making my cabbage thoran, I thought I would also make my soup for this evening because we are going to be going out tonight uh, to take Abe swimming. So it's a very crazy night and I want to make sure I have some lovely veggies all ready for me when I come back. So I'm going to show you how I do a quick little soup. So I'm going to go in with... So I'm actually really enjoying this broccoli and cauliflower medley because you can just bung it into a pot with potatoes, onions, garlic, if you want to. You can keep it simple, a little bit of bouillie, and then call it a day. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and that is going to be the vegetable portion for dinner this evening. So if you're in the kitchen, one of the most important things I found, if you're in the kitchen um, and you've got like five minutes spare, try and think about what food you're going to need for the rest of the day or for the rest of the week, what you can get prepared. Could you soak some chickpeas? Could you put on some rice on the Instant Pot? Could you make a batch of soup? Could you just chop some veggies for dinner and make a sauce like any of those little things that you could do in five minutes um try and make the most of the time that you're actually in the kitchen and get those things done because really being a little bit prepared ahead of time is just so 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 invaluable when you're on your weight loss journey uh, or just when you're wanting to eat healthy in general to be honest so anyway let's go make this soup okay so for my big soup i've got one onion two little medium kind of potatoes oh thank you babe Two medium potatoes just because I wanted to have a little bit of creaminess um, and I'm going to go in with my massive bag this is a fantastic just chuck it in the pot situation couldn't be easier and also this soup's going to last today and tomorrow this is some really good advanced planning thank you Rami Rami just had me potatoes okay going in with like a tablespoon of bouillie two things of frozen garlic in oh Rami pop it in here you go baby girl Whee! And loads of water. I'm just gonna stick the lid on and forget about it for 10 or 15 minutes and then we're done. I also have a few more minutes to kill in the kitchen. So I thought, um, whilst we were in the potato cupboard, I thought I would just uh, grab these sweet potatoes, some of which I really need using. In there, thank you, Rami. Yeah, so I thought I'd st quickly stick these potatoes in the oven just so that we've got some nice baked potatoes in case we're wanting to use it for who knows what. You just never know. It's always good to have starches prepped ahead of time for those emergency moments, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or, you know, if the kids don't want to eat dinner, um, they can quickly have a sweet potato or if I'm snacking. 
So I'm gonna poke holes in these, whack them in the oven. People always think that the starch solution or eating this way, eating to lose weight is very lengthy and you have to be in the kitchen for long periods of time, but you really don't have to, to be honest. You can make it quick and simple. You can really be effective with the time that you have. Obviously, like me, if you're a foodie and your job is about food, then obviously you can spend more time in the kitchen making fancy stuff. You can literally take half an hour every few days and just do all your starch prep and loads of soups and loads of veggies and stuff and basically you're ready to rumble. You guys know I've got some leftovers from yesterday and it now looks a little bit sad. It's my cherry cake that Romy ate all the cherries out of. Yes, Romy. There you go, baby girl. So that's not very much in terms of volume and I'm gonna be hungry if that's all I'm gonna be eating. So I thought I could just jazz it up with, I don't even know what. Um, basically, I was trying to figure out what to do with this and I've realized this would be the perfect topping for my fruity, yogurty combination. If I slice this up into little chunks, it would almost be like a um, fudgy, like cakey bits inside my fruity yogurt thing. I think that would be incredible. So this is a great use of leftover um, OT cake. Unless Romy eats it all. Okay, I've got two apples chopped up. Now let's slice up my uh, sad looking cake. This is actually a great repurposing of a cake. I'm so, I'm so thrilled with this idea. So we're gonna chuck that in there. And I'm not going to do the bananas or berries yet because they're just going to go off and they're going to defrost by the time I've eaten my veggies. So I'm going to leave this like that ready for me when I'm ready for it. So cabbage snoring is all ready and I am just diving into this. Romy also saw it and she remembered it from yesterday. She was like, oh my God. So she's having a big pile of it as well. Honestly, this is the most delicious way of eating cabbage and a cauliflower ever. I think I'm going to be having this every single day for breakfast. I've just done an Instagram reel about it. So if you want like the full recipe and stuff, go and check it out. Mm. I don't know how veggies can taste so good. Finding ways to enjoy veggies is really so vital. Just look at the volume of food that you get to eat that is delicious in order to get lean. I mean, this is just veggies. That is incredible. I'm gonna be really nicely satisfied after this and this. I'm probably not even gonna need any lunch. Oh, you gorgeous girl. I can't believe that Romy has eaten that entire massive pile of veggies. I gave her way more than I thought she was ever gonna eat. She shoveled in and now she's asking for mine. I just wish I had um, fed Abe this way from when he was a tiny boo-boo. Because, I mean, he does still eat healthy, but he is so much more fussy. But Romy just eats everything. I mean, maybe she's just a kid that also eats everything. Um, so, you know, it's also about the kid as well. But when you expose them to so much goodness and so much variety early on, they just love it. And that is just, it makes me happy. It's so, so beautiful. Okay, veggies have been demolished. And I cannot believe we got through that many veggies. That was a full cauliflower and half a cabbage, guys. Like... That is crazy. Obviously, I know it feels like, sounds like it's a bit ridiculous to eat that many veggies for breakfast. And uh, to a lot of people, it might be ridiculous. A, if you're a volume eater, uh, you need a lot of volume and veggies are the way forwards. Um, but also you can build it up over time. You don't have to just start eating that many veggies. You can start by eating a carrot before your breakfast. You can start by having a couple of bits of broccoli. Um, you know, your favorite veggies, always choose your favorites. Um, or you could just go for fruit. You don't even have to have veggies, but I do, I mean, veggies are quite special to be fair. Fruit, fruit is brilliant. The combination of fruit and veggies really is ultimate. Okay, so I've chopped my banana up, going in with loads and loads of frozen berries. Oh, I just love this combination, guys. It's incredible. When you find a meal that works for you, feel free to have it on repeat. <laughs> as long as it ticks all of the boxes. So there we go, I'm going to go in with a nice little chunk of yogurt on the top. And then let's give it a nice big old mix. Oh, hold on, cinnamon. Loads yeah. and loads of cinnamon, of course. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Let's have a little taste with the cake because I think it's going to be amazing. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is a yummy addition. Oh, oh. Kind of tastes like um, just fudgy bits. Fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to eat this. Romy probably wants to go to sleep. Get some work done. I'll see you for my next yeah. meal. Romy and I have just been playing for the last couple of hours. I don't know why, but I'm feeling just exhausted. I think I had a really late night last night. And also it's just not sunny in the slightest. 
and it feels all gloomy and we're just like snuggled up on the couch reading stories and I'm just feeling really knackered. So we need to leave to go and take Abe swimming in about half an hour. So I'm going to quickly make myself some food. I'm not super hungry right now, but hunger can strike when you least expect it. And I always take food with me when I leave the house because guaranteed it's as soon as I leave the house that I'm going to start to get hungry, obviously. I never want to be caught in a situation where I'm out and about and I don't have any food because that would be horrific. So I know it's super boring, guys. Today's basically a repeat of yesterday. And, you know, I just want to show you that sometimes it's okay to repeat meals again and again and again if you love them and if they work so i'm going to make that smoothie that i made yesterday because it was a really darn delicious smoothie with the cauliflower bananas cocoa powder ice i think that was basically it um but yeah let's do that because that was yummy okay so exactly the same as yesterday just a replica thick and creamy chocolate shake so i'm gonna have this on the go and i'm also gonna take some carrots and some apples i think um i need to figure out what abe's gonna have because abe always comes out of school starving and sometimes he doesn't have any leftover lunch so i he's also gone off bananas which is a right pain because that is such a good fallback option um okay so i decided on a very quick and simple snack for abe um I'm gonna pack him some mango. I've also found some. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know there was broccoli in there. So I've also found some leftover broccoli and potato from a couple of days ago, I think. Quickly heat this up and sprinkle some nutritional yeast on the top so Abe can have that if he's starving. I always like to say to Abe, if he's not, if, if I offer him something and he's not really in the mood for having it, right? I always just say to him, well, you're not hungry enough for it, which is what I would say to myself. So for the potatoes and broccoli, yes, it's plain, yes, it's basic, and yes, it's veggie, um, but if he's hungry, he will eat it. So, um, you know, I, I'm i a little bit strict with my kids in terms of food. Um, I, I mean, obviously I, I want them to have food that they actually really like to eat, but sometimes if I've made a meal, they just need to eat it. Um, and I think that's absolutely fine to be honest. Obviously everyone has a different parenting style, but I like to treat myself like that. If I'm hungry enough, I'll eat it. And so will my kids. So anyway, um, that's going to be a pretty good snack for Abe. And I am bringing some carrots and my smoothie. See, taking food with you on the go does not have to be really complicated or really difficult or um, really crazy or anything. It can be really quick and simple. A smoothie, how fast was that to throw together? That was like two minutes to throw together and literally some carrots and some apples. I also could take the sweet potato if I fancy this, but I just don't think I'm gonna need it. So in true fashion, Abe, <laughs> Abe's been downing me smoothie. <laughs> As is evident all over his face. He's had his mango. Um, and now he's jumped into the smoothie, but to be fair, I can't be mad because it's full of cauliflower. So, I mean, it's got loads of good stuff in there. Seven more. You want seven more sips? You have to yeah. leave me some smoothie in case I get hungry. Well, hopefully I don't get hungry, eh? We're back at home and it, everyone's a little bit wild. Anyway, Abe drank that much of my smoothie and then regurgitated some of it back into the thing. So I couldn't even have the rest. So I'm going to see if he wants to drink the rest of that. But... I also didn't make any dinner or get, do anything to prepare for dinner. I'm feeling a little bit just um, unprepared today. I don't know what's going on. I was meant to have a lovely lentil soup, but I realized I already made some vegetable soup that we're meant to be having as a starter. So I don't really know what's going on there, but I'm gonna eat my carrots because I am getting a bit hungry. And I'm gonna do the kids some picky bits because that's the kind of day it is. And I'm gonna do them a massive, massive batch of hummus right now with loads of other fresh things and um, call it a day. I'm going to have some soup, maybe with some hummus in it. Who knows? Okay, for those of you who do not know how to make an oil-free hummus, I'm going to show you really quickly. So I've just done about four or five cups of chickpeas. It's, you know, open to interpretation. I'm doing about a cup of water. Probably will add some more. Okay, I'm going to go in with some garlic salt. You could obviously do fresh garlic if you wanted to. There we go. Loads and loads of lemon juice. Oh, that's not loads. Jamesy, can you get me some more? Now you could leave it there, but I do think hummus is very special with some tahini in it. So two tablespoons of the best tahini ever. Thank you, Jimsy. More lemon juice, there we go. Now let's split it up and see what we've got. I've added in some more water, some more, basically some more of everything until it just kind of gets to the perfect consistency and the flavor. And honestly, so the lazy rascals we are, we're just having soup for dinner. James is having loads of bread. 
and I am having big dollops of hummus on the top. Shall we go and sit at the table? There we go. Yes, let's go sit at the table. Mm. Sometimes meals can just be super simple as long as you've got your starch, got your veg, you don't need to think about it, don't need to overcomplicate it. I'm going to eat my carrots first. Even though it's a simple dinner, everyone is scraping their bowls clean. <laughs> so it happens when you're hungry. Um, I am going to go in with another bowl of soup, though. Uh, oh, yeah. No. You'd like some more. Ronnie's on a third batch now. So I'm sitting here trying to get Ronnie off to sleep, and she's refusing. She is a wild, wild animal. She's just been, like, head banging herself on the couch like a crazy person. But I'm sitting here a little bit hungry, thinking to myself that I haven't really had a good amount of starchy stuff today. <clears throat> it's a fine line. Obviously, it's great to get loads of veggies in, but it's also really important not to neglect those starches because those starches are what keeps you satisfied for the long haul, and that's what keeps you consistent and stops you um, pendulum swinging and then going back to junk food or just, you know, overindulging on something um, that you don't want to be overindulging on. Yeah, a lot of the time when I've chatted to people in the past, their main issue is consistency. And the reason why consistency is an issue is because they were really neglecting their starches. And when they were doing that, they were starving and then they would eat all the ice cream and stuff like that. So anyway, so I know I'm not going to fly off a handle and eat junk food, but I do want to make sure that I am getting enough starch in for the day. So I'm in the kitchen hunting, trying to figure out what I could eat. We don't really have much already made. I'm debating some porridge. That sounds quite yummy. Just a nice, simple bowl of porridge. Cinnamon, banana, blah, 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 blah. Frozen mango sounds good. Oh, frozen mixed berries and mango. That sounds really nice on a porridge, actually. So maybe I'll do that. Alternatively, I do have some sweet potato. And I was envisaging in my mind warmed up apples with cinnamon, sliced up sweet potato, and what else? And chickpeas all in like a big medley. And I thought that would be really yummy as well. So I don't know which one to go for, to be honest. They both sound darn delicious. But what, you know, when it comes to nighttime snacking, I always say, if you're hungry, definitely eat some food. You should, it's not like, you know, past six o'clock, you shouldn't allow yourself any food. That's a load of rubbish. Obviously it's not the best, it's not the optimum time to be eating at night, but it's much more important to eat when you're hungry. Um, if you're just nighttime like snacky and you're not actually hungry and you're just looking for something snacky, then that's a really good time to check in with yourself and try and figure out why you're snacky and what you're what you're actually looking for. Um, is it are you bored? Are you angry? Are you stressed? And try and address those issues. Or are you just in the habit of having snacks? Or have you just got food around you, like junk food around you? Um, because obviously that just makes it impossible to say no to. So anyway, there's loads of different layers. But basically, if you're hungry, please eat some food. It's just vital. I think I'm going to have myself a big bowl of porridge with some fruit in it. Like I said, food doesn't really have to make sense. And today is a day of not making sense and also just going with the flow and eating random things. And um, I know I obviously try and show you guys like really fun recipes a lot of the time because um, I really love doing that and I love getting creative. But also a lot of the days that you have are also just going to be weird mishmashes of food that just get you through the day. Because remember, food is fuel at the end of the day. Food can be really exciting, but food is just fuel. To be honest, if this wasn't my job, if I wasn't sharing, you know, food and creating recipes for a living, I would probably eat the same five meals over and over and over again and just call it a day, to be honest. Okay, one cup of oats, two cups of water. And I'm just going to stick that in the microwave for about four minutes. Also, let me know if you guys are also naughty rascals like us and don't clean your kitchen at night time, clean your kitchen in the morning instead. I regret it every morning, but at the night time, it feels so right. Okay, so I've gone for loads of frozen blueberries and frozen mango and cinnamon on the top. Now, if I was to douse this in maple syrup, which I most certainly could, um, I would eat the whole thing without fail. However, without the maple syrup, I know that I'm going to stop when I'm not hungry because it's going to stop tasting quite as good because it's not covered in sweetie maple syrup that makes my mouth explode with happiness. Um, however, it's still going to be delicious because I am hungry. But this will not be delicious if I am not hungry. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to go and tuck into this. Lo and behold, I am full. I am stopping there. And you know, it's actually a very powerful thing to 
not feel the need to finish your plate every single time you eat food and to just really get in tune with your body's hunger fullness cues and just say, actually, I don't need any more. I can tell that my body's had enough. And if obviously you're struggling to do that, then that is something that you need to work on. It took me a long time to really work on that. Um, and obviously I'm still working on that on a daily basis, but it does feel nice to be able to figure out how to listen to my hunger fullness cues and stop when I'm not hungry anymore.